and we are squandering, in my opinion, an enormous opportunity to do some transformative good through legislation that is being stopped by a senator like Joe Manchin. Pennsylvania Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman, who right now is absolutely dominating the Democratic primary in Pennsylvania for Senate, suffered a bit of a health scare in the final days of this primary, which takes place tomorrow. But I'm going to get to his domination in this race showcases exactly what Democratic candidates need to do and how the Democratic Party leadership and establishment have been wrong this entire time. So first on his health scare, luckily this is just a scare and nothing more. So as uh, New York Magazine details here, doctors were able to quickly and completely remove the clot, reversing the stroke, he said, and they got my heart under control as well. The doctors tell me I didn't suffer any cognitive damage. I'm well on my way to making a full recovery, he added. Fetterman said he was being kept at the hospital for observation, but would soon, but would, but would be out soon and that doctors have assured me that I'll be able to get back on the campaign trail. So, a stroke in the final days, definitely scary, um, but thankfully, he's fine. He posted this image uh, on Twitter with his family. There's another video of him talking um, with his wife, and, you know, he's speaking fine. He's Everything's normal. So, thank goodness uh, he is recovering, and he's well, or, you know, he's getting better in hospital. But... I really want to focus on just how dominant Fetterman has been here. And this is, you know, one of the rare cases that I've seen, at least in recent memory, where you have a more progressive candidate going up against an establishment corporate back candidate. And the progressive is just completely dominating the race. Like it's not even close. So Fetterman up, you know, 31 points here on Connor Lamb, Connor Lamb being the corporate backed democratic candidate. It is a complete blowout at this point. So, Let's hope, you know, this continues to election day. I know this, you know, health health scare may, I don't know, may affect voters' minds, but I don't think so. Fetterman is not, you know, an older dude. He's in good health. He's just been working incredibly hard during this race, and I think that has, has led to the stress and ultimately um, the minor stroke that he had. But I want to play for you this uh, this campaign ad that they put out recently, giving you kind of a, an idea of how they are framing him as a candidate. All across Pennsylvania, a movement is building. Hundreds of thousands of grassroots folks energize in every corner. In conversations, union halls, diners, and street corners. He's a different kind of character, I'll tell you. A different kind of Democrat, candidate, campaign. Taking on every politician, insider, and out-of-state rich guy trying to take over Pennsylvania. Because he has our back, and they don't. John Fetterman for Pennsylvania. This is John Fetterman, and I approve this message. So you can kind of see why Fetterman is a different candidate. He is positioning himself as an outsider. Outsiders are popular, regardless of the party. Now, when you have an outsider in the Democratic Party, it's someone that actually cares about people, actually wants to do good. An outsider in the GOP, I mean, ultimately, they're all the same, like, Trump tried to position himself as an outsider, but we're talking about a guy who just took on the entire Republican agenda and put just a, a, you know, a racist, a more racist, overtly racist face on it. That was really the only difference there is just the messaging and who Trump was. But in terms of the platform, what they fought for, you know, tax cuts for the rich was one of their only things they actually uh, that, that Trump actually accomplished while in office. So we're talking about outsiders in the Democratic Party actually caring about people actually pushing issues like I'll show you a $15 an hour minimum wage, healthcare fundamental rights. So John Fetterman backs Medicare for all viewing climate change as a real issue, supporting cannabis legalization, um, not running away from immigration, black lives matter, union support as well. A big uh, issue for him, women's right to an abortion, LGBTQ issues and get corporate money out of politics. Another big issue for democratic voters. So, this is why he is so popular. Now, I will say, you know, his appearance, um, his, you know, he looks like a working class Joe. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's. I think that does help him. Just looking like a, a dude who's, you know, wearing a sweater, uh, uh, you know, isn't all that polished, maybe a little rough around the edges. So I think that helps his message as well. But apart from that, 
We're talking about somebody who actually is a fighter. And ultimately, that is what Democratic voters want to see. And you're going to see that uh, a bit of that here uh, in this coverage. So they also share this video. This is from their campaign as well. But you're going to see, um, you know, part of the reason why Fetterman's message is so is resonating so much with voters. Fetterman is overwhelmingly the favorite to win what could be the Democrats' best chance at flipping a Senate seat with more than half of the registered Democrats in the state saying they plan to vote for him. Are you a progressive? No, I'm just a Democrat that has always run on what I believe and know to be true. And six years ago, that was considered progressive. But now there isn't a single Democrat in this race or any race that I'm aware of that's running on anything different. And we are squandering, in my opinion, an enormous opportunity to do some transformative good through legislation that is being stopped by a senator like Joe Manchin. And I'm not criticizing him. I'm simply saying I would vote differently. So if that makes me anything, you know, it's not I don't believe it's a moderate to derail your party's and president's agenda. All right, so a few things worth noting here that I find interesting. First, he's still wearing the sweater. (laughs) This, I think, is a positive for him because this is who he is. He's embracing it. He's authentically being himself. He's enforcing a suit and tie to him when he isn't that kind of person. If you're this kind of person as a candidate, embrace it. Don't run away from it. Now, if you are a suit and tie guy, don't, you know, try to pretend you're not. I think ultimately here, the authenticity is what is coming through. And that also, of course, you know, This is a superficial level, but deeper than that, because he actually fights for a real working class message, this kind of look does work on him. Now that gets to the label part. So he says that he is not a progressive, which may at first scare some actual progressive voters off, but you see the rest of his answer there. He goes on to criticize Joe Manchin. This is a guy who ultimately is a progressive in the sense that he supports higher wages, he supports legalizing cannabis, he supports Black Lives Matter, supports LGBTQ rights, is pro-choice. He he is a progressive in the real sense, but he understands that labels hurt. Different people put different meanings to labels. So what he may view or, or what I may view as being progressive is not what someone else may view as progressive. Because, you know, Nancy Pelosi has called herself a progressive, even though she is not in support of the Fetterman platform. So these labels ultimately, I think, just hurt people. So if you can just, as a candidate, if you're able to run away from that, you know, the, these various labels and just embrace what your message actually is, your what your platform is, and at the same time, authentically be yourself in the process of doing that, that is what shines through. And I think that's part of why Fetterman is doing so well. And also just on the mansion part, He's unafraid to call out Democratic candidate or uh, lawmakers that are right now blocking Biden's agenda. Good. <laughs> we need more of this. So, again, showing you that he's a fighter. Sure, he could, I guess, co- go a little harder on Manchin here, but he's a candidate right now. Uh, you know, let's see if he wins and be eventually at, uh, in the general become senator. See what he does at that point. But in terms of messaging... Yeah, don't be afraid to attack people who are ultimately hurting the country. Now, in Manchin's case, you know, some may ask, but Manchin actually is very popular in in West Virginia. And that's true, he is. Because his support among Republican voters has increased dramatically. He has seen, in fact, I believe a 16-point increase in his approval rating since the beginning of Biden's term. And that's because, only because, his support with Republicans have increased, while support from Democratic voters has dropped off. So because Manchin has been actively blocking the Biden agenda, conservatives in West Virginia now like Joe Manchin a little more than they did before, even though he was already kind of popular with, you know, more conservative voters. But in terms of Pennsylvania, you know, Fetterman can, can definitely win with this message fighting for the working class and being willing to criticize people like Manchin, like Cinema, who are blocking Biden's very, you know, moderate agenda uh, at best. Now, just to end on the, uh, you know, the implosion here of, of Connor Lamb. So this is from New York Times. The seeming meltdown for Mr. Lamb, whose initial victories in Western Pennsylvania had been a model for President Biden's 2020 race, reflects a frustration among Democrats nationally with politicians who promise bipartisan accord, including Mr. Biden, and who have yielded meager results in Washington. 
It comes as the left sees a rising Republican extremism on voting rights and abortion. Some Democrats appear more eager to elect fighters than candidates who might be tempted, like party moderates, to block their priorities. So this is another piece of it. It isn't just that Fetterman himself is a good candidate. It's also the year 2022 and what is happening in this moment right now, where voters finally, you know, the the stable Democratic voters, the ones that have been hard to pull over to a more progressive message, I think a lot of those voters are finally seeing the light, understanding that you need actual fighters, people like a Bernie Sanders, to fight the Republican Party because typical Democrats like Nancy Pelosi, they're calling for a stronger Republican Party. But you have people like Fetterman, people like uh, Sanders, people like Nina Turner, who unfortunately lost her, her race because of all the money against her. But people like that, that message resonates because you have here people who are actual fighters will, will be unafraid to go after Republicans, which is what voters for Democratic candidates want to see. So he is offering that, whereas Mr. Lamb, Mr. Lamb, Connor Lamb, um, is just your typical, you know, corporate backed candidate and isn't isn't a fighter in the sense that, you know, John Fetterman is. Now, I also quickly want to just highlight Summer Lee, who also has her primary uh, tomorrow, Pennsylvania's 12th district. This is somebody who is endorsed by Bernie Sanders, another fantastic uh, actual progressive, <laughs> but, you know, someone who fights for the working class, someone who stands up for human rights. Uh, you know, of course, the, the, the entire platform that is Fetterman's platform that I'll show you here. So same thing. We're talking the, the Bernie Sanders platform. So all the same issues here. And um, I covered uh, her announcement uh, ad six months ago. So I have more of a breakdown of Summer Lee in, in that video. So you can check that out. But a couple of great choices here for people in Pennsylvania. So if you are in Pennsylvania's 12th, make sure you support Summer Lee. And if you're in Pennsylvania in general, in the Democratic primary, back Mr. Fetterman here, John Fetterman, who I think, I mean, looks like he's going to win anyways, but make sure you go out and vote and make sure he wins and will give uh, <laughs> an incredible, an incredible challenge to whoever wins the Republican side, which that race is also very interesting. You have Dr. Oz, you have Kathy Barnett now surging to second place, who is this one, this candidate who, um, you know, was sidelined for the longest time, has not had a lot of money in the race, but has risen to uh, fame now because of people like Steve Bannon. So, you know, she is extreme. You have that versus Dr. Oz, who is now playing conservative. I don't even know what he is. It doesn't matter. He is also terrible. But Fetterman against either of those two, you're going to have a pretty good race. So let's see what happens in uh, this race, but also in November.